Hello and welcome to Scraptastic Patchwork. This is Leah. This is the Easy Beginner Quilt Series. We are on part five. And if you haven't already, get caught up below in the playlist, which is in the description box. This episode ended up being much bigger than I anticipated. So we will actually be splitting this one up. So these three items, the quilting, the actual quilting of the sandwich, the trimming, and then talking about your label or signing your quilt are going to be covered in part five and part six. So I'm going to add one more episode to this series where part seven will be binding your quilt and finishing it. So in this particular episode, part five, we are going to discuss getting started on quilting your sandwich different stitches, wet thread, different tools, and I will show you how I've started the quilt, but we're not going to finish it in this episode. It would be two hours long. <laughs> so welcome again, and let's get started on quilting our sandwich. So before we move to the machine, we need to talk about thread. So this is an extra block that I have of the quilt. And so I laid out the possibilities for thread on this. Now, whereas when you piece, you just want, it doesn't really matter what kind of thread you use. Um, I mean, in some cases you're gonna, you would see it. So you, you don't wanna go too crazy. Although I, I ignore that. But in the case of the thread you choose when you are quilting, you want to do a good quality thread, one that works great in your machine, one that won't give you too many problems. And you have to decide, do I want my quilting stitches to show or do I want it just to blend in? Do I want the piecing to stand out? So that's something that you have to decide. And every quilt is different. Every quilter is different. So these are some I pulled in to kind of audition. I could go with a darker. This is one of my variegated ones. I could go with this kind of almost aqua. Then I have a couple other variegated that has some some of the different colors that are in this quilt but other colors as well they're kind of kind of subtle rainbowy but in more pastel kind of colors and then you have kind of what most traditional quilters use uh it, it's pretty close to a dove gray. If all else fails, this is what quilters use is this kind of light gray that is almost white. And then white. So since my, a lot of my fabrics in this quilt have white in them, I can al always go with white. So these two would kind of blend in more. So if I wanted my piecing to stand out more, that's a conservative way to go. However, I would like to go pretty substantial in my quilting stitches. I want to see them. And although I like this variegated one, I think this is the winner right here. So I am going to go with this almost, it's kind of a, it's it's aqua-ish <laughs> but it looks great with this so I think that that is the winner so I'm gonna go with that one a couple of things before we start quilting this is a walking foot most machines come with it 
but if not, uh, they're easy to find. <clears throat> and what this does is it helps when you have thicker layers, it has feed dogs that you can have above your fabric and then your machine has your feed dogs below the fabric. So it, it moves your fabric and your layers together easier. And it's, it's called a walking foot because it, it slows you down. I mean, you definitely should not be flooring it <laughs> when you work on this because it, it keeps a steady pace and good stitches and you need that when you're quilting. You don't want to just floor it and <laughs> your stitches will be all crazy. So a walking foot just kind of keeps your pace steady and keeps all your layers together moving nicely. So it's not, if you're doing smaller projects and maybe not very thick of a sandwich, it's not imperative. But definitely for bigger jobs, I, I would suggest you use a walking foot. And then quilting gloves. So these look like garden gloves. Um, and maybe you can even use garden gloves. I don't know. But they've got these little tiny um, nubby thingies that grip. And it, it helps you keep your quilt flat and when you move it like this those little grippies are are pretty good because you know your your fingers are gonna slide sometimes again I use these for for bigger projects I don't use them for little quilting projects because it gets sweaty <laughs> but uh, for bigger quilts I use them all the time so those are just a couple things that I would suggest you invest in when you're gonna be quilting so I went ahead and actually filled six bobbins it's a good thing a good practice that before you start a quilt that you should have plenty of bobbins ready sometimes I do this sometimes I forget and then I have to rethread everything to wind a bobbin so I went ahead and did that so I have my bobbins all set to go and now I want to show you the setup I have here for helping support my quilt and that is because you want as you quilt you want all of this to be sorry about that as flat as possible so let me set this up so I can show you how to do that. Okay, so my setup here is I have my quilting table, but then I also have to the left of me my ironing board that slides, and I slide it over so that it supports this whole left side, and it supports the weight of my quilt as I quilt. And the reason for that is when you are moving your fabric through, you want to have it as flat as possible and without any of the quilt, depending on the size and, and how heavy, pulling. So I went ahead and did my initial quilting stitches and I'll tell you why in a minute. But this is what you want to be working with here. Your whole area that you're immediately quilting on needs to be flat and nothing, if you didn't have this supported over here to the left, and even, you know, I, I usually try to keep this up even on my chest to support that, it's gonna pull, one or two or even three of the layers out of whack. So this area, kind of just this whole, maybe a foot circumference here, you want that to be flat and nothing pulling. So always be adjusting so that it's flat and 
so you don't get any what's called snow plowing. So let me adjust the camera and I'll show you as I go. So in the beginning, I would suggest that you practice straight line quilting. So that is with your walking foot here or a normal foot as opposed to free motion, which is a separate foot that you then control your stitches. And that's a whole another skill set that um, you really need to practice for quite some time before you really get good at it. Um, I am usually, I just do straight line quilting because I find it's, it's rewarding. And I also like to do stitch in the ditch. So if you see here, I've done two lines already. This is stitch in the ditch where it just goes right in the seam along that seam you're stitching and so that's kind of nice it doesn't have to be perfect you might you know kind of go wiggly at first but you just kind of follow that I find that to be very effective so with this particular quilt since we've got lots of straight lines but they're they're changing um, I am going to do stitch in the ditch, but also just straight line as well. And I'm going to use this ruler, which is approximately an inch wide. And that's what I'm going to kind of eyeball my lines. So it, what it turns out to be is I will be doing stitch with some of the blocks. I'll be in the ditch and then down the center of these pieces. So stitch in the ditch, straight line quilting through the center, another ditch. So that's how it's going to go. And I'm going to do both directions and what that's going to turn out, it's a match stick also is a term that is used for that. So it'll just be a grid. And I think that will turn out really nice with the way that the piecing is in this quilt. And it's relaxing because it's just straight and you eyeball it and you because these blocks are not that big I will be you know when I'm doing this kind of eyeball straight line I can just look to the next block as my guide you can also tape off if you don't trust your eye and there's also quilting pins or fabric pins that either um, wash out or they fade out with heat. You can use that if you want to draw on your quilts. But I just find that it's it, eyeballing it, especially because I'm not, I'm only having to eyeball it with one block at a time. That's it. Okay, the other thing is... I like to do, no matter what kind of quilting stitches I'm doing, I like to do one line down the center of either sides, either side. So down the center of the length and down the center of the width. When you quilt, you always want to start in the middle because you're moving your fabric out like this. If you started on one side or the other, then your fabric would not stay together nicely. So if you start in the middle and move out this way, that is the most successful way to quilt. And also, it you only have to be dealing with half the size of the quilt at a time in your machine. So to the right of me, I have this bunched in the throat of the sewing machine. And then to the left of me, I have the rest of the quilt balanced on the table and this side table that I've, that I've put in place here. And as I said, what's in front of me, I usually just kind of balance on my chest as I go. So this whole area here in front of me is all I'm worrying about. And I'm going slow and I'm constantly picking up the fabric to make sure that nothing is pulling out of the way. So I went ahead and did my center line through the whole width and whole length. 
And now I'm going to start moving this way to the right and doing all my lines one at a time to the end, to the right side of this. Then I'm gonna turn it around and move to the other side. And then we're gonna do the same with the length of the quilt. With smaller projects, you could, if when you're doing this straight line, you could go one length and then run your needle and foot along that, that side and then go back. But with a bigger quilt, it will move it and you'll get wavy. So I am going to go in one direction. In other words, I'm going to do this whole line. So I'm going to pull this back up to the top here. So I'm at the, this is the border. I'm not going to do the border right now. I'm going to do that separately. So this is my right here is where I did my first stitch line in the ditch. So my next is going to be down the center of this piece here and all the way down. Then I'm going to cut my threads and come back up to the top as opposed to, as I said, going over turning. You can do that with smaller pieces. You can't do that with bigger quilts. It, it's just not only does it become very tiring because you're having to turn your quilt constantly, but as I said, because you're pushing this way and then you're pushing this way, it's going gonna, it's gonna to create a waviness in your quilt. It's going to pull in different directions. So completely go in one direction when you're doing this straight line quilting. Okay, so before we start, um, there are some quilters who have you pull up and is their habit to pull up the bobbin thread from the back and tie off. I don't do that. I never have. Um, I don't find it makes that much difference. I know that they, if you're don't want their, if you want your stitches to be really nice and perfect in the back, then that's why you do that. But I haven't really found it to be, uh, make that much difference. So I don't do it. I just start. And before I start, I want to warn you that my walking foot is very squeaky. So <laughs> I'm sorry about that. So I start and then I just do, you know, my couple stay stitches backwards. And that holds my my stitching and then when I'm done with this straight line in both directions I'm going to stitch in the ditch around my border here and and that'll go right over those stitches so you really won't notice them so okay so again make sure that your rolled up right side in the throat of your machine is nice and straight that it's everything's nice and supported on the left side and that everything in your lap is either on the table or on your chest or or whatever and you don't have to support the whole entire quilt all the time I just don't I want it to be as straight as I can and again, you're worrying about just this area in front of you. And what you want is put your hands kind of like this around that area that you're about to stitch. And you're pulling, not too much, but enough to pull this straight in all directions. Because you, what you don't want to happen, this is what snow plowing is, where things just kind of get bunched up and you're pushing fabric into a big plow <laughs> in front of you. Instead, you just want this nice and flat. So that's about as fast as you should go. And when I get to my thumbs, then I stop and I adjust again, just to make sure everything's straight and flat and I do it again so 
I'm constantly adjusting and you just kind of get into a rhythm of it making sure everything's flat and see this is my line that I did prior so you just want to make sure that you're not getting too much fabric in between your lines there everything should be flat and the the movement of your fabric should always be pushed over to the left or down you don't want anything bunched up like this flat is what you're going for so keep going and see I'm eyeballing right now because I don't have the the guide of that piece of fabric anymore I've, but now that I have moved this around this is what I'm aiming for right here <laughs> you'll see it in a minute just trying to keep everything straight pulling this up adjusting sticking that through <laughs> you get into a rhythm and again you're you're trying to just like with basting it's not a process that you can rush this is again why you need to enjoy every aspect of this because it does take time and let me tell you especially if you have a heavy quilt it takes muscle you're not used to having to use your arms and your shoulders and your neck in this way so you have to build up endurance as well because you're you're moving and you're sometimes can get tense oh that's another thing is make sure your ergonomic that your table and your chair and your machine is all comfortable so that you're not hunched over and you're not straining to see you just you need that you need to be comfortable so you can endure a long period of time <laughs> but at the same time get up from time to time so that you don't wear yourself out so I'm gonna aim again for the middle of that strip making sure everything's flat all the time. So I'm heading down the center of this strip now. See, I'm getting a little snow plowy here, so let me adjust. Adjust, adjust, adjust. So I'm gonna continue for a while and get to, okay, so I'm heading for the center of my quilt again, and I wanna show you what can happen. Okay, this is the very center of my quilt right here. So I've got a vertical line of stitching that I did, and there, here's my initial lengthwise stitch that I did. So right here at the center, because you've got these two stitches, you could end up with some snow plowing here. So if you can see this happening, I've got a little too much top, quilt top happening. So you can kind of pull in all directions before you get there to kind of fudge it a little bit. So it doesn't, you don't have a ton of puckering and wrinkling. This is why you need to have as many pins as you can put in here. So just go. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna get out of this one without a little pucker here. Yep. So that is okay. So that's why it's important to, to get that flat to get all three layers basted together very accurately and take your time doing this. So I'll show you that, how that ended up happening, what it looks like after I get done. 
Okay, so I'm going to do a bunch of lines like this, and um, I'll show you my progress in a bit. I thought I'd give you a closer look at some of the stitches. It might be a really good idea to make a sample sandwich for yourself before you start if you've never done this before. That way you can kind of get the rhythm of it, you can play with your stitch length, and you can play with quilting stitches. So let's start with the stitch in the ditch so I can kind of show you what that looks like. All right, so again, I apologize for my squeaky walking foot. So with stitch in the ditch, obviously you see the seam here. You just go right along that seam. And if, you know, it takes practice, so you're gonna accidentally go up on the ridge from time to time and that's all right. So you just kind of keep that needle right along that seam, that folded fabric. See, I just went over. That's <laughs> okay. So you just use that seam as a guide. And different um, fabrics, prints, make it much easier to see. Sometimes they blend together and you kind of and that's why it's really good to have good light. So you see right here, your stitching is in that ditch. And it, this is what happens when it kind of goes up on that ridge. So you just want to stay as straight on that ditch as you can. And then what I'm going to be doing on this quilt is of course every inch. So I'm just going to go right down the center and that way we can look at what just straight stitch looks like. Just a nice straight stitch and so as I said you can play with your stitch length top stitching or quilting stitches can be bigger than your piecing stitches so I typically leave mine both my piecing and my quilting stitches I keep somewhere between two and three um, but like I said you can turn it up a, a tad for for top stitching or quilting stitches because you kind of it's a nicer look to actually see the individual stitches so right now my machine is set at two and a half so here's another option this is straight line but you're I'm gonna do a wave so I just start and I just barely move it back and forth just moving the fabric or my sandwich so that squeak irritating <laughs> I get used to it but yeah maybe I can grease it up and it would go away I don't know I haven't messed with it so this is what you have. You have this nice gradual wave. Isn't that fun? And then you can kind of play with um, different shapes. So I'm going to eyeball this, but this is something that maybe if you want to do draw a line, I'm going to do a stitch to here and then I'm going to change direction and I'm gonna change direction, change direction. So it may not turn out even, but it at least will give you an idea of different things that you could do. So I get to here. Oh, it looks like I need to change my bobbin. One moment. All right, let's try that again. All right, 
lift up my foot, change direction. Lift up my foot, change direction. And one last time. So we have this fun kind of geometric thing going on here that you could do. And now I'm going to do just a very gradual but bigger curve than I did with that little wave. So I'm just going to start like this and I'm just going to gradually change direction. As I head to the other side, do the same thing. So there is a lot of things that you can do with a walking foot or a regular foot. See, that's a nice little bigger wave. And there's so many. I mean, there's all kinds of things you can think of that would be fun. But I playing with a regular foot or a walking foot first is really, I think, the first step in quilting. And then down the line, you can move into free motion. But that gives you plenty of options. Wanted to give you a little glimpse of the back. I've obviously only gone in one direction and I will be going in the other direction now. This video, however, is already long enough for one episode. So I'm going to go ahead and, and upload this video and then we will finish the quilting in the second part of this. So see you soon and hopefully you are having fun quilting. Bye.